Hi oh guys, it's Darren here from Deep Blue Apps, and I'm just going to show you how to do some realistic uh, movements when we're going up and down slopes. Now, I've seen a robot game in the forum, um, it looked really, really good. However, one thing for me really stood out, and that was when the robot was going up the slopes, then it was pretty much like this. And you can see it doesn't look that realistic. Um, you can see I've got the feet off the ground. Um, so I've had a little play tonight just trying to get a little bit more realistic robot and just have a quick go in here let's just go back to the platforms because that's where the code is I'll just turn that on and it's going to move right now you'll notice that when we're going up now you can see it's a little bit more realistic his body and his head and his feet um, are all moving in relation to the slopes and when he's coming down Again, it just looks a little bit more realistic um, we, than just having it stiff and going up. You see his feet are always in line with the angle of the platforms, so that looks decent. And his body is sort of leaning back when he's going down and leaning forward when he's going up the slopes. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do that now. It's very easy. Um, we've got a, a mask actor here, which is this one here. And that's the first actor. Now we've actually made this round. I'm just going to show you what happens if we don't. Now, if you're making, if you've made a few platform games, then you know if you have a rectangular actor as a, a mask or as a main character, you know there is a danger that it could get stuck. You see, I cannot go left now um, because there's a little bit of a spike, and I can't go that way. Oh, I can just about, but you can see the the trouble with having a rectangular actor as a mask or a, a sprite for your main character. You can see now that we're just stuck on that jagged edge. Um, there's a little tiny bit of black sticking up just there. And it's actually quarters. So that's why we need a round um, circular mask. It's going to make taking the, um, the rotation of the platforms in a little bit harder. If it was rectangle we could just simply constrain its rotation and then rotate the head and body based on that, but there's another way to do it, and if you go into platforms, you can see we've got um, an attribute, a game attribute called feet angle, now you can call this what you want, um, and in the platforms I've simply got, if uh, overlap or collides, attrib type, round mask, then change attribute, game, feet angle to self rotation, so whatever that platform, whatever its rotation is, so we just go in there, that would be something like 20, it's 20.1. 20 um, that'll just change that attribute to 20.1. And then the feet, we've just got to constrain self-rotation to gain feet angle. And for the body, we've got self-rotation to minus gain feet angle. So that'll like make it tilt forward when it's going uphill and tilt back when it's going um, downhill and for the head we've just got the game feet angle again um, obviously we're constraining the round mask has some constraint attributes we've got a game mask X and a game mask Y and that just basically tells the uh, feet and the head and the platforms where to go you can see here we're constraining its X to game max X mask X and its Y to game mask Y minus 6 um, you'll have to play around with these numbers depending on the parts of your own. And because the body is higher, we're constraining it to the mask Y plus 16. And on the head, it's going to be higher still. So we're doing self position Y to mask Y plus 48. Um, this rule down here is just a game left is true, then self graphics flip is false. Uh, basically, I just made this quickly. I had him facing left, so I want him facing. If left is true, I'm going to flip it, uh, I'm going to leave it alone, sorry, and if right is true, then I'm just going to flip that so it faces the right. And in the round mask, very simply, I've just got a couple of game booleans that say if keyboard right is down, then game right is true, otherwise game right is false. Same with the left, and then we've just got a timer with the uh, motion linear velocity x to x minus 10 for the left and x plus 10 for the right. And that's all I've done just for this simple demonstration. You can see the attributes there 
we've got. And as you can see, it it's a lot better. Um, it's not perfect, but it is a lot better than uh, what I've shown you right at the start of the video. And you can even have these uh, separate actors animated. You can have some, maybe do his feet and his legs separately. Use that actor. Have the body as a separate animation, and then the head um, as another separate animation. And it's just better than just having it go up in a. Um, it's just better than having it go up in a direct line, which is what'll happen um, if we turn the platforms. Just turn this rule off. We'll click play. Um, it just looks a lot better than this. You can see it's a bit rigid and it's just going down. You can notice it more on the uh, the steeper slopes. It just doesn't look very realistic to me. And like I've said, I've seen a game in the forum that look, looks really, really nice. I can't remember the name of the game now. But I think it would really benefit from something like this when you're walking up the slopes. So you can see now look, it's so much more realistic as he's going up and then going back down the slopes. So that's Darren, I'm going to sign off now. Hope you found this useful and I'll speak to you soon guys.